Hello, welcome to another episode of Merit Makes a Mill of It. In previous shows, I have made an abomination out of lasagna, yule logs, fish, and birthday cakes. This week, I'm going to be, well, not week, it doesn't come out, it comes out once a year. I'm going to be making a staple of every British summertime menu, even though it's the middle of winter. None other than quiche, specifically quiche Lorraine. I don't know whether Lorraine is named after a quiche or whether the quiche is named after Lorraine. A quiche for one, a sad indictment of perhaps how lonely people have become in the 21st century, back in the 1950s, when quiche first came out, they were made for five to six people. These days, they're so unpopular that they can only find one person to eat them. You might want to keep that for other uh, lonely dishes. I'm just gonna cut it in half and then guess what's in it. Pastry, I need to make a pastry, which I'm incapable of doing. I'm actually also incapable of spelling, which is bad enough. Cheese. Don't just look with your eyes, look with your nose as well. There's a lot, very, uh, there's a lot of scents coming off it. Um, onion, cheese, and then there's ham in there. Probably egg. Let's just write milk down for the sake of it. Let's go to the shops. Do I like a man who's recently been to the shops? Yes, that's because I have. Let's have a look at what I bought for this lovely Quiche, butter, milk, flour, onion, grated cheese, and not just any old bacon, pre-sliced bacon, which apparently has got a name, lardons. Lardons. What happens if you get very, very excited but your appendage is made out of butter. You get a lard on. Where to start? First of all, just familiarise yourself with your kitchen. Rubbing down the sides of the counters. Get yourself calm and in the mood for cooking. The more you know your kitchen, the more you'll be able to cook. The more you know your kitchen, the more comfortable you'll feel and the food won't get intimidated, which can spoil it. Also, you should make sure you know all of your kitchen's areas spatially, because um, I read a frightening statistic that most accidents in the home happen in the kitchen. So not only are you trying to cook a meal, you're also trying to combat death. First of all, I think I need to make um, the cage for the contents known as the pastry or the crust. Aprons can be quite empowering. What I'm going to do first is make a, uh, a pastry on this surface here. Just put flour down like this. It's important just to feel like you're making some sort of progress. Ah, actually, <laughs> Don't, in retrospect, don't do that yet because now you can't use that surface. It's important to learn from your mistakes. I've realised I've got to make the pastry first <laughs> before uh, that goes down. But the good news is, at least it's good, uh, the flour can get acclimatised to the work environment. Always start. alphabetically. If you think about cooking, go through all the ingredients of things, if you think they're normally named alphabetically so you know which ones to go 
put in first. So let's go for B, the butter. Actually, forget the alphabet stuff and start with the eggs. Think of how many people are going to eat the food and times that by two. This is a quiche for one. This means two eggs. I'm just gonna have this plate here as a discard pile so you can see what I've used in the uh, making of this. So you can just um, follow along at home. A fair bit of flour there. Now remember what you're looking to make here is something strong enough to um, cage all of the food. I don't know how much, I think there's not two eggs. <laughs> I, it's butter, isn't it? Let's just put it over there. I w would recommend one thing is not to get these reflective bowls because then you can see the disappointment of your own face in them when you make a mistake and it's very bad for your self-esteem. To decide how much butter you're going to use, just write the item name into the butter. So I'm writing quiche into the butter here. And then for every person eating, you just have one letter. So this is just going to be one person. So I'm just going to use the Q. Lightly melt the butter. If you're worried about making a mistake, just half do something. Because that way it's half a mistake and you've not done the whole thing. For example, if you were it's like going to prison for GBH instead of murder. Enough, just so all the butter is covered. Kneading. I'm gonna put milk in because milk never hurt anyone. Water kills yeah. thousands of people every year. Cholera uh, and drowning. Milk, not very many milk deaths. This is much better than, see this is the egg one. Oh, that's it. Rubbish. This, this is what I'm talking about. Yes, this room, I'm reminded of something I did at school approximately 32 years ago. And it definitely felt like this. Imagine if I made the perfect quiche. Because you think a lot of the great inventions are made from mistakes. So penicillin, for example, this could be the next penicillin that people with diseases are literally queuing up to have some of Marek's magic quiche. Yeah, I was just about to say, Paul, before you said that, now's a good time to put the oven on. Gas mark five. How do I know that? Everyone says gas mark four or five. Luckily, I put this flour out here, so this is all acclimatized now, and I'm just gonna to toss the um, pastry into the flour. You just want to roll it out. Don't ask too many questions of it. Just, and then make sure it's buttered properly. Just turn it over. It's not really done anything. Make sure there's enough flour down there, first of all. Actually, <laughs> in these circumstances, you don't, you don't need to, you don't need to roll it. You don't need to roll it. Uh, don't worry about that bit. Let this do the work for you. So just thinly use your thumbs. Don't be scared to get fully involved in it all. Use your thumbs and just press it around the edges. Yeah, it might look bad now, but believe me, uh, after 20 minutes on gas mark five, all those imperfections will actually give this quiche a real personality of its own. And that's what we're aiming to do here on Matt Makes a Mill of It. Food that's not scared to say, yeah, I am an individual. I feel a little bit like a dog 
that's drunk out of the toilet. It's just followed its instincts. But because other people have got different opinions, that dog is wrong when all that dog has done is drink water. I feel a bit like that. And we've got your discard pile there, saves all you throwing away later on. A lot of people watching this might think that I'm lucky to still be alive having these cooking skills. And I think it leads to the question whether or not I might be immortal. Might as well cook them all, just save energy. Bowl number three. By process of deduction, there must be egg in this somewhere. There's no egg in this, there's no egg there, so the filling must be egg. How many do we use? Remember from last time? Two eggs. That's why there are six eggs in every egg box, because people make mistakes. If cooking was easy, there'd only be two eggs in every egg box, because that's what you need for most meals. But it's not. It shows you that it's difficult. People make lots of mistakes, so that there's six eggs in each box, which means three lots of mistakes per meal. I don't think I needed the milk. Last chance. A lot of you at home might be one bowlers or two bowlers. I'm now on my fourth bowl. Uh, sorry, I keep scratching my beard the whole time. But um, this is all hypoallergenic, which means that it doesn't... Uh, i wash my hands. Maybe just use one egg when it's your last chance. So we fill the quiche with some onion and bacon. Looks nice, doesn't it? Don't overdo it yet, mate. The egg mixture will just seep in to the crevices. You just add the cheese on top and that hopefully will overpower any of the mistakes. Put it in, give it a wish. Good luck, mate. Make me proud. Now what you've done is you've put some of the guilt from the steaks onto the quiche, away from yourself. So you know it's not your fault if the quiche doesn't perform properly. You can use this time to, to tidy up. It's now 30 minutes later. Oh. Uh, uh. I'm gonna give it another five minutes. Improve! Must improve! It's always good during the cooking, if it's not going well, to shout a few words of encouragement. Let the food know what it's doing wrong. It's not all your responsibility. See you in five. It's me again. It's five minutes later. Have I aged well? Well, that's not the question. The question is, has the quiche aged well? As you can see, there's a bit of um, quiche fall off here in the surrounding areas. Um, that's what happens when the quiche decides, you know, it doesn't like the feel of something and it will discard the um, excess. And that isn't an especially good sign. Uh. It looks pretty similar. I don't know if the pastry is actually cooked. I mean, is this safe to eat, Paul? I'm asking you because I've got no idea. Um, thinner bits of pastry, possibly. I wouldn't go for the thick stuff. Why not? Because it's definitely not cooked. As you can see, the pastry is a bit, it looks repugnant. I'm gonna try it now. It might be too hot enough. I mean, most quiches you would cover in ketchup anyway, so you wouldn't taste any of the flavour. So this eating a quiche without putting sauce on it sort of defeats the whole point of quiches, really.
Somehow, it tastes as though all the food is totally separate from each other, despite the fact that I've cooked them together. So it tastes like raw onions, slightly cooked smoked bacon and egg, and some sort of cardboard that are entirely separate entities, despite being in the same quiche. Let's try this one. I mean, that one tastes like food, which is, I would say, gives it this edge. Well, what have I learned from this incredible experience? Number one, put some salt in to just helps um, mesmerize everything, which in turn brings out the flavors. Number two, my pastry mix was too wet so that needs to be drier and then I mean I rolled it quite well but not well enough then that would allow me to make the pastry thinner in the tray which meant that the food actually cook but in terms of progress I wasn't actually far off I mean it's a pretty simple meal but I did pretty well so let's congratulate everyone if you want to cook someone alive it's much quicker if the walls of their house are thinner and that is a good way of thinking about pies and quiche and remember always wash your hands do your best and don't touch yourself while cooking in areas that may hold bacteria happy cooking if you want to see more about makes a meal of it why not click somewhere here and also, if you'd like to see a documentary made by my friend Paul who makes all these videos, it's very good, and I'm also in it, but that's not the main point. You should watch it anyway. Click here. It's already on screen by now. So make sure you click on that. Like, subscribe. I hate people who say that. That's all right, because I hate myself. See you later. Bye.